Hi y'all, and welcome to the recording video for the vein if you love me. It's set in both Greek and English. And what we're going to do is I'll have you sing, sing it through first in Greek, and we'll talk about that for in a little bit. And then when we get to the repeat sign on the last page, uh, go back to the beginning and sing it in English. There'll be a little breath there that I'll give you as we go through it. There's going to be some additional breaths that are not indicated in the score uh, that we're going to take. And I'll, I'll give those to you as we go. Um... Then when you get to the end in English, sing it in English till the very end. So there are some Greek words there that we will not actually sing this performance, but uh, or this rendering. And uh, it was Henry's idea to kind of do it first in the one, then the other. I think it's a great idea. So let's see how that goes comes across. Uh, if you take a look at the transliteration guide, which is the second page of what you were sent, let me talk through that just a little bit. Uh, the regular. Uh, a sound is the ah uh, is in Latin like pot tear. Uh, it's a little brighter than in, we do, often do in English. We have a variety of ah uh, sounds in English, and the brightest of them is what's really endemic to Latin, uh, pot tear. And uh, then if you look down that list, you see a w. That's actually the o as in day all. So like day all, you know, they, in Latin there really isn't a dark o like we have. Uh, so it is uh, all. Dale. And E, the small case E, is always a, as in fed, just like in Latin. The capital E is going to be the first thing, and look through here ahead, and that's going to be the sound of Zela. So moving quickly to that A. It's not an A that we have, uh, you know, A plus E, A, but it is a true A, where it doesn't travel with that little final E vanishing vowel in there. I is as in Latin E. Um, S is always S, whether it's at the beginning, whether it's at the end. So things that you're going to see in the transliteration, like A-W-S, will pronounce os, whereas our English habit would be to say oz, you know, to have a Z sound. They have a, their own letter for it, Z, which I don't think appears in this piece. Um, they have their own sound for that. So S is always S. T-H is always, it's never, never voiced. So it's always as in thistle. I think the only one we have is at the end, so it's going to be, we're, that's easier to do, like math, the word math. Um, so I think TH takes care of itself. Oh, that big O is not as in boat. I'm from Philly, so we do a lot of U down there. Oh, it's one of our big things. Uh, but uh, boat, but uh, it's just a plain O as in Oben, Oben in German. Uh, so there's no U, but if you get a little U in there, as long as, so that O is that sound, the, the brighter O is A-W in this transliteration. Uh, U is in Latin and the rest, R's are trilled as in um, Latin as well. And that's pretty much all I think we're really gonna need on here. I, A-I is like as in kite, so it's our regular chi is the only one you're gonna see that mostly. So this whole thing will sound like E-on agapate metas and ta lost oh there's that all oh. so it's really almost think like o in there uh and they do use their letter o ta lost uh toss am a k there's that e sound the a so it's not e but it's not zila but zela uh tere sa de and then back to the soft e uh kai ego er otes oton and again, dry consonants. So that's like in uh, the Mediterranean language in general, Spanish too. Uh, Use those seco consonants. Patera, kai, alon, paracleton, do, se, i, humen. And that little eight sound, which the Greek had, as Greek was absorbed into Latin, the letter would remain, but the, the Romans just didn't pronounce H's. So the words would stay, so that's why like a word like uh, H-U-C is pronounced ook in, um, in Latin, but that's going to indicate that ook is coming to Latin through Greek and the H is preserved. That also happens with A-E syllables in classic and regular. So uh, the A-E was something that's coming through as a particular sound, a diphthong, which they had, diphthong, which they had in uh, Greek, but the Italians did not eventually have diphthongs. Uh, possibly in the beginning they may have had a couple, but by the time it was turned into 
Italiano, they were gone. Uh, and with Sirius, they were never present. Um, and that's it. So Greek first, get to the repeat, go back, English, finish in English, we're set. We're going to do it in a slow two. One, two. So I'll do one, two. You join me for one, two. Then we'll be silent for two beats, and then we'll start in Greek. Just practice the word slowly speaking, and you'll get it. It'll come, it'll come clear. And if it's close, you know what? We're, we're like light years ahead of anyone else. So here we go. One, two. One, two. One, two. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and alto lean one and two and three and one no breath one two breathe one and two and one and two and one and two and one breathe one two and one and two and one and two one two and one two and one two one two and one and two and one and two breathe English. One and two and one and two and and two and one and two and leaning out toes two and one and two and and one. No breath and what's oh, sorry about that two and breathe one and two and one. all there is to that. Now, on the English, I neglected in the beginning, but I think I actually played almost all the right notes, <laughs> um, is that, you know, it's hard because I didn't want to make the score too complicated to read. So when you do it in English, the English words are lining up under the notes you want them to sing, although the kind of like the melisma marks and all that are not going to coincide between Greek and English, uh, just because it would sound weird if, if I did it in the exact same rhythm as the Greek. Um, so, like, uh, if you look at the bass part, uh, if he love, and then just follow, right where it goes, me, he, he, my, co. See that my, co? You're going to see two quarters there. You're going to interpolate a quarter note on that spot. Uh, you're the only ones that have to invent to note basses. Uh, commandment, keep my. And so that D for basses, that has to be sung as a half note. Keep my. I doubt it half, actually. And that commandments, but it's going to line up to the notes. So just kind of make it work. And I'm thinking about the best way to express that. So let me know if that's followable, and that'll be the way it goes. If that ends up being really confusing, don't sweat it. Just record record it as best you can, because it'll be really fun to hear it. Um, but I'm still kind of struggling with the best way to represent that on paper. Uh, that's relatively clear. And that's my report. So the way the RSCM does that, the Royal College. They get really immersed in details, so I think it make it harder. So I'm trying this. And that's it. You guys are amazing, and that's all there is to that. And this was written for Barbara and Dennis, 
and uh, Dennis did at least get to see it. I don't know if he got to hear it before he passed away, but it was, you know, there a few weeks before he died. And that's my report.